Hey, everybody. Welcome to the bonus edition of Winners and Winners Radio. This is your college football show. I am your host, Scott Steen. I am the lead handicapper at winnersandwinners.com. And I'm your co-host, Scott Rochelle, senior handicapper over winnersandwinners.com. And together we make up Winners and Winners Radio. Give us an hour. We'll give you the winners. And that is exactly what we do on our, on our football show, Scott. On our daily show, we talk about some stuff. We have some fun segments. We, uh, we, we, we laugh it up and talk about the news a little bit. But, man, when we do our football, when we do our college and our NFL shows, that's just like 60 minutes, pedal to the metal, get those picks out there, grip it, rip it, right? Yep. Okay, <laughs> very good. I can see you're, uh, you're very enthusiastic, anxious to get started today. Let's cap last week's results. I know this is the moment you've been waiting for, sir as you went from a game and a half back to a game and a half ahead. How does that happen? Well, Weep. for the first time in his career, since we've been doing this starting last year, what happened, Scott? Well, I actually thought about it. I might have swept on the first ever show, and I haven't okay. swept since. But I ended up going 3-0, and which was definitely nice. 3-0, and and it matched up particularly well with the week that I happened to go 0-3 for the first time in – I don't know, a minute. So you hit the uh, Michigan-Wisconsin first quarter under nine and a half. Quarter bets. Uh, BC plus 15, and you had Charlotte plus 10 and a half. All those came through. Meanwhile, I had Oklahoma, who was victimized by a late kickoff return for a touchdown. Thank you, K-State. Appreciate it as they finally were covering. And then they weren't. And I had Boise State in their game, in which they just absolutely no-showed at all. And I had Georgia State, and they hung for a minute, but then ultimately decided that they really didn't want to get involved and ended up getting crushed. I had them plus 10. That was not enough. So that's how it happens. Game and a half back, game and a half up. There he is. It, it, It happens just that fast. So congratulations on your new lead. Don't get comfortable in that position. That's all I'm saying. I won't. We're in week six. Yes, this is. So week yeah, we we got time. All right. So let's get rolling as we always do. Start with the top twenty-five in reverse order. Welcome to the party, San Diego State Aztecs. They're at home, hosting New Mexico this week. Scott, the Aztecs, nineteen and a half point favorites. Forty-two and a half is your total. My goodness, forty-two and a half in a college football game. Oh, Scott, I don't know. This is a uh, Aztec team, like I said, making their debut. I imagine they're going to be there next week, too. You think New Mexico is going to give them much trouble? No. Uh, I think that the San Diego State team, as soon as I wrote them off for screwing me against New Mexico State in week one, they've been really good. And the offense has seemed to find its groove. They've kind of rotated quarterbacks, either between Brookshire and Johnson, because Brookshire got injured. This Johnson kid's not bad at quarterback he's not great but I think he's okay the defense is the story though New Mexico could barely move the ball against Air Force they're not going to move the ball against San Diego State I think San Diego State wins in a route you I think New Mexico keeps it a little bit close with it with a total like this 19 and a half I just think that number's a little tall San Diego State very good defense like you said but they do have a tendency to play with their food on occasion and just give up meaningless yards for... I don't think it's going to be a sweat-free win, but I think they'll win by three touchdowns. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to go the uh, I'm going to go the other way, Scott. I'm going to take New Mexico in this one, plus the 19 and a half. I'm so probably. you like the over or the under? I'm going to play... I'm going to, I'm going to play the over 42 and a half. I really went back and forth on this, and uh, I'm going to play 42 and a half. So I actually agree with you with the total, which I know sounds a little bit odd because of the fact that we talk about correlated parlays a lot, and yet we agree on the total, but we disagree on the side. I'm just looking at New Mexico's defense. I think San Diego State's good enough to actually score like 35. And if that's the case, I think that New Mexico can score 10. Okay. All right. Uh, That certainly certainly could work out that way. And I'm just looking at like a backdoor situation all the way around where it's yeah, I'm also looking at defensive scores because San Diego State special teams-wise and defense are very opportunistic. And I think that New Mexico is definitely clumsy enough to give away a defensive touchdown or two. Oh, that's certainly true. See, I'm just looking 
I'm looking 31 10 late in the game. And uh, Do you think they get one across? Just kind of loses interest. Yeah. yeah. Just, just sneak in there. So, um, and by the way, I didn't talk about our our overall record. And this was this was fascinating, Scott. I can't remember where I wrote this down, but. Do you mean for our actual picks? Or do you mean for the yeah, week no, by for, week? For, whatever. Week by week. Okay. So last week, I went five and eight. Um, excuse me. I, excuse me. I went eight and 13 on sides. I went 13 and eight on totals. You've been sizzling on totals. You, right. You went 11 and 10 or 10 and 11 on the sides. Are you ready? I, I don't remember if it was good or bad. I think it was bad five on the totals. And five and 16. <laughs> That's what I thought. I didn't think it was good on the totals. So, yeah. But I, 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 I swept on my actual plays, which is right. the most important part. So I noticed cares? none of them were totals. Yeah, they were not. <laughs> I think that's the key. So, of course, and I've got I'm, – I'm I, I need to put in more totals with my picks as well. Or – and here's another idea. Learn how to pick sides. So, I, I'd forgotten to say that, so I wanted to throw that in. Okay. I'm so. pretty sure the totals were bad last week for me. But at the end of the day, if I am give out my three best plays and they win – I'll take a damn 0 for 21 on the totals if I'm not betting any of them personally. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We're, we're, we're doing it. We do it for fun. Like We just break yes. down the games. We, we give you some thoughts from some food for thought by in no way, in, unless we say otherwise, are any of these games where we're going, absolutely take this to the bank. You should sell your car and go bet yeah, this. Yeah, I'm just saying if we don't give out a play either on the YouTube side or in your case, the premium side, and we give out a lean that ends up losing – there's right. a reason why it was a lean. It was because right. we didn't like the game enough to give it out. Save your roasting. That's what we're saying. Yeah, pretty much. SMU, Scott, we talked about them. They are now ranked number 24 in the nation, 13 and a half point favorite in the Navy. This Navy team is just, it's awful. Awful. Can you, you got anything good to say about Navy, Scott? I actually do. I think this number's too shores. high. I mean, they do a great job in war. I think this number's too high. Really? I do. I think Navy might have turned a corner last week. I'm not saying this team's good, but it seems like they finally found a quarterback to actually like. One of the perks of running a service academy triple option offense is the fact that you have about 45 potential quarterbacks on the roster because they all can just go behind center and run the ball repeatedly. Nobody has to throw. Yeah, so they apparently found a guy last week who definitely helped out uh, by the name of Ty Lavatai. And they were very good. They came from behind, beat UCF. I know UCF had a backup quarterback because Gabriel's out with a broken clavicle. But Navy ended up rallying the troops. They ended up winning the game. SMU, we know that this team's very good, but historically, they've been awful guarding the triple option. I think that Navy can score enough to keep pace. I like the over. I disagree with the under money. I think SMU going up tempo should score 30-something points, 40-something points. I think Navy holds its own. So, for me, I like the over. I think the spread's too high. I think SMU's going to win the game, but I think it'll be around a touchdown. All right. I know we're going to disagree, but I actually I actually did watch a bit of that Navy-UCF game last week. That right. new quarterback, I thought, actually looked pretty comfortable. Yeah, and, that, and that's certainly accurate. I just don't have enough confidence in this Navy defense to stop SMU enough times. I think, why? Because I think... it's, it's terrible? What's that? Why? Because the defense is terrible? Well, yeah, that would be, yeah, that okay, would, cool. that'd be my premise there. Cool. So we do disagree. I've got I've got SMU minus the thirteen and a half. Love love the extra bonus hook there. Where I don't have to worry about a fourteen push. As far as the total goes, it's over a pass for me. If you think SMU potentially can score fifty in this game, which I know you do, I think Navy's will probably hold them to thirty something. But I just think if you're expecting SMU's offense to run wild, you kind of have to like the over, don't you? I like how you have referred to both of my picks with such derision. It literally drips from your mouth. It's like, oh, well, we'll find out because you're I the total. Think you, I think they're going to score a lot of points. I know you do. You're the totals guy, so you know <laughs> everyone's waiting to hear what you think about the total. <laughs> Let's see what the master of totals thinks. All right, number twenty-three in the nation, North Carolina State. They played so well that they get the day off. Congratulations. Well, you didn't answer. You like the, so? Do you like the over? Oh yes, I'm on the over as well. Okay. Yes, yes, just like you do. Mm-hmm. Stanford, Arizona State, this game will be tonight, Scott, as we talk. This is Friday afternoon, so we're going to sneak a pick in here. Well, I was actually going to wonder, by the time this gets uploaded, the game's probably over. Do you want to just skip the Thursday games? I mean, the Friday games? Or do you want to just talk about it anyway? It'll be be available in podcast form. I mean, yeah, we talked about the games yesterday, so fair enough. Why must you be a malcontent? Because I can. We're clicking right along, trying to get this done. I'm going out of town. 
We can do it. I'm just I'm saying. Like the guy in the meeting. Does anybody have any questions? And when everybody knows there's no more fucking questions. My hand just shot, shoots up at, out of my, you know. I've got a question. Shoulder. Where do we park? Okay. And then mm-hmm. you just, you just, everybody groans and lays back in there. Do you seat. validate? Not you. I, I give you no validation at all. Cool. All right, let's be fast. I've got, I've got Stanford plus the points. I'll play the. Um, you do like Stanford. You told me you were potentially flip-flopping yesterday. Uh, I've changed my mind. Again, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm, I've got to – yeah, yeah. I've got to, I've got to do that. I'm gonna play, I'll play the over. Uh, for me, I'm going with Stanford plus the points. I think Arizona State's going to win, but I think it'll be by about 10. And for this one, uh, I'll lean to the under, actually. Right. I think that you'll see a bit of time control. Okay, very good. Um. I, I, you know, and we could, this could be a, this could be a, a bad play because as Scott referred to, I, I did think about changing my mind mainly because that uh, Stanford rush defense has been awful so far and Arizona yeah. State does a nice job of running the ball. So I could but, be screwed there. That's, but, but I know that they're going to want to run it. So that's why I'm kind of expecting a lot of running clock. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Number 20, uh, number 20, Florida is hosting Vanderbilt, Florida, Scott. 39 point conference favorite. How many times do you think we've seen that? Not enough. They're in the same conference as Bama, so not well, enough. Well, all right. Excluding Bama, how many 39 point spreads do you think we've seen in the SEC? Uh, Just 12. say not many. In fucking 12. Movie. Okay. 12? Yeah. Really? Since uh, 1905. Okay, good. I don't know. Like, what, what kind of question is this? I, I've got, I don't think they've had many. I've got Vandy here. I've got – it's just so many points. I can't do it. I can't lay 39 points in a conference game. I know Vandy is bad. But you know what? They're due for that game, Scott. They're due for that game where they just inexplicably keep it close. Didn't for, that happen last year? I remember Trask and company actually struggled with Vandy a little bit. I, it, it happens – it's, it's always a different opponent. But, yes, it happens every year. Vanderbilt will be awful. But all of a sudden, they play one game, and you're like, wow, you didn't suck like you normally do. And I think this could be that game. 39 points. Uh, okay, give me the – This comment. just has backdoor cover written all over it for me for Vandy. The way that yeah. I'm looking at it is that they – the markets are overreacting to losing by about 90 to Georgia. Georgia kills everybody besides Bama. I mean, that team is so good. So, I think Vandy will be better in this game. Florida defensively has not been great. They've lost two or three. I'm not a – Emory Jones, I think, has been underwhelming at quarterback. My favorite play in this is actually Florida first quarter, which is at, like, minus 10, because I think that they'll just open up a big leading coast. But I think they'll win by 35. That, sound, that sounds about right. I just don't know what incentive they have if they're up by 31 or 35 to, to keep the first string out there. You no, know? they already lost two games. It's not like they're, it's going to matter. They lost two conference games, actually, so their odds of making the SEC title game are basically dead. Well, and you always want – when you, in, in big games like that, with big spreads, you always want to know whether they're home or away because they're, they're at home. They dress a lot more guys. Yeah. And you're, you're a lot more likely to see some down ventures earlier in the game in a home I, game. I expect that in this one. So I've got I've got Vandy there. Ugh, as far as besides the top, that, I got to look at the under. Sure, and, and it's it's semi correlated. I would call that. Well, if you're expecting Vandy to struggle offensively and still cover, then yeah, that's 100 percent correlated. Well, what I'm saying is, you, they could still Florida could put up 55, and Vandy could still cover by putting up 17. So I mean, it, it could you could easily go over the total and have Vandy cover. Oh no, it could. I'm just saying that I'm not sure if Vandy's going over the team total here. But they might just do enough to eat up some clock to some degree. If they if they don't go over the team total, they will not cover. They probably won't. But I think there is a chance they. Can. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be forty two zip or something. If if you want a, a, a prediction for this game, I'm going forty two ten. Forty two ten. All right, that's solid. Uh, Wake Forest, Scott. We're going to find out what they're made of as they head up to take on the cues at the Carrier Dome. Wake Forest. Is that right? Nineteen and a half point favorite. Is that what you have? I have six. They're the 19th seed. That's what I did. That's what I did. Sorry. Yeah, I they're, they're about minus five and a half, minus six. That's exactly right. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. That can't be right. I'll tell you what, though. This Wake Forest team's good. Is Syracuse sneaky? Yeah, their defense is sneaky good. And, uh, you know, Wake Forest, I was not super impressed with him last week. What did you, you think of The defense got torched by Malik Cunningham, which has happened to some other teams before. 
Wake won the game. Offensively, we know this team can, is very good at running the ball. Hartman's a pretty good quarterback. Syracuse in the Dome, though, underrated. I kind of like the Qs plus the points here. The spread seems a little bit trappy to me. You? Well, I liked it a lot better at uh, 19 and a half, I got to be honest with you. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> you know, I, I they let me down last week. I, I backed them against Louisville. I actually like that Syracuse quarterback, though, the transfer they got over, Shriver. Yeah. He's actually not bad. He's not He's not har- He's not terrible. You know, Syracuse finally has a quarterback. They finally got tired of uh, – what, what, was, what was the kid's name? Guido? DeVito. DeVito, Mike DeVito. I used to fade him every damn time, and I made so much money fading that guy. He's so bad. And they brought in Culpepper for a couple games, like, last year. Cul- from where? From uh, Cul- I don't know where he went to high school, but – No, no, he, he wasn't a transfer. I don't think so. I, th- I think they brought him in. He's like a freshman. He had really, really long hair, and he was just not very good either. But now they finally got a transfer, and he's pretty good. Okay. All right. Well, you know, they uh, they were not able to get past Florida State last week, but they kept it closed, you know, and they had that they had that win at, against Liberty. I guess that was their kind of their signature win, although Liberty – They've been despite, a bit down this year. Despite how good Willis is, that defense has not been as good as it was last The defense week. is okay. I think it's the offensive line. Because Willis has been running for his life for the entire season. I think Syracuse sacked them, what, six times in that game? Yeah, they, they got crushed to, him in that game. Got to him a lot. All right. So, you know what? I'm going to give him one more shot. Ch- I'm going to give him one more shot, Scott. I'm going to give the Deeks one more chance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, take the Deacons. You're going you're gonna to take Syracuse here with the points? Yeah, I, I think this game's going to be close. I think Syracuse is alive, but I think Wake will win the game. I'm kind of threading the needle, but I do think Syracuse hangs around and makes this a game. Okay. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the under here. I think you've got you've got two decent defenses that'll that'll go at it. I think you get one dry spell of you know maybe eight minutes, another one of six minutes. I think that'll be enough to keep this under. I'm looking at the under too. If I think Syracuse is going to cover, then the defense cannot be atrocious. Right. So I'll go with the under. Fair enough. Number sixteen, Kentucky. Hello, UK. They're taking on the Bayou Bengals there in Lexington. Scott, three point favorite. 50 in the hook is the total here. Spread seems a bit low, doesn't it? I don't – well, you think – how much cachet do you think LSU has just because they're LSU? I don't think they deserve any, though. They blew the game against Auburn last week. Kentucky beat Florida, and Kentucky's at home. Right. Three no, no, sounds I, very low to me. Yeah, I think I think there could be – I think there could be value there. I just don't think – I like Kentucky in this one. I, I think we have to face the fact that this LSU team just may not be very good. No, I, I think that the offense with Johnson at quarterback or whoever they end up using at quarterback, because I think they're going to rotate at some point in the season, not very good. LSU has the cachet still from the Burrow and the Orgeron and, you know, that title. I'm not sure Orgeron's actually a good coach. Can I, is that a hot take? Can I say that? I was that? just going to ask you if, if you think that it was a lot of personality, hype-driven, and most importantly, Joe Burrow-driven. I think they beat a generation. I think they had a generational just team with mm-hmm. Burrow and company, and the quarter- right. the coach didn't really matter. And I think that they won the title. And people think Orgeron, go Tigers. They think that he's a great he's a great coach, and I I think he's average. I don't think he's very good. So I just watched. Um, I like Stoops though. By the way, I think Stoops is one of the most underrated co- coaches in the country. I just watched the Water Boy again, Scott. Okay. And I, I challenge you now to, to watch Blake Clark's character, who is the assistant coach of the, uh, of the Waterboys team, mm-hmm. Cajun that wears the overalls. Yeah. And then, yeah, wa- yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. And then watch an Ed Orgeron news conference. Okay, nice. Tell me they're not brothers. Could be. Good movie, though. I, I, it, it really is. That, that's the kind of time I have on my hands. I need something in the background that doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. You know, I would have taken the under in all their games. <laughs> no kidding what a monster oh i've, I've got to go i've got to go uk here too Do you agree with stoops by the way i feel like he's one of those coaches that just doesn't really get any recognition he's been very successful at kentucky yeah he has he, he's been he's been sneaky good yeah. you know and that's you've you've got to have a to have a plus record in in the sec with a with a marginal school like a kentucky or a mizzou in a, in a basketball school in the sec in a, in a, at a basketball school for sure uh, yeah you, you've got to be doing a lot of things right no no question about that does it trouble you or worry you the fact that kentucky is an incredible minus nine in turnover ratio no because they're still undefeated 
They find they, they keep finding ways to win games. I don't they're think LSU is that good. They're four and one against the number, and yeah, yeah. They beat Florida last week. They're still at home. LSU is coming off a game they probably should have beat Bo Nixon, and yeah, Bo I, I'm Bo Nix in Bo Nixon, but yeah. In general, I'm going Kentucky. I think they should be favored by at least four and a half in this spot. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know because the problem is – I think Johnson's going to turn the ball over two, three times. Unless you can't run the ball. No, and I think Johnson's turnover prone. Yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, – I think you're, you're good for at least one. This is a really good Kentucky defense. I'm not sure where the offense is going to come from. for My hot take for this one, I'm giving Johnson three picks. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the under here, Scott. I think this is a grinded out, poke your eyes out with sharp sticks kind of game. But I I have to like the under. Kentucky only scored 16 points against South Carolina. I mean, this team offensively is not great, but defensively, it's a very good unit. I I think they'll win this game ugly, ugly 23-17. Sounds about right. Coastal Carolina played last night. You and I were both all over that one. This, this Arkansas State defense. I had, a, I had a great time. I had a great time. Oh, bad. Yeah, that was that was a blast. Everything everything hit except the over, and that probably should have got there, but it didn't. It so. did early. If you waited too late, you missed it. But it did. Yeah. It did. I believe middle. In the yeah, you game. could. Yeah, that was a great middle opportunity because there was sixty nine and a half. 70. I was going to say, what was it like a four or five point middle? Uh, I think it closed over 73. So, yeah, you were close. You probably had a four-point four four point arbitrage there. Notre Dame, Scott, they are going on the road to Blacksburg to take on the Virginia Tech Hokies. Notre Dame is ranked 14th in the country. Virginia Tech unranked. This game is pick them, my friend. Who do you pick? Well, I know last week I was using the trend of underdog – of uh, Unranked favorites over ranked teams. How'd that go last week? I went to check, but overall, oh, was that how it was? I mean, oh overall, your record was stellar. So, oh and two was not good. Uh, should have been one and one, but uh, LSU ended up choking the game away to Auburn. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think that Virginia Tech is going to keep this game very ugly because they need to. I don't think their offense is any good. Now, I think Pine's going to start. For Notre Dame, I think Cohen's basically done with this team because I don't think he's a good fit at all. And Pine has shown some flashes at times. I know Cohen got benched in you the Cincinnati ba- Do you game. base that on anything? No, pure hunch. So you well, see, it, well, it, see no reports? The, or their coach, any- though, uh, Brian Kelly, has been very, very noncommittal on the quarterback. So I do think they're running some type of carousel over there. And I think Pine will eventually win the job full-time, which might work out here. But Cohen's also been battling some injury issues for the last couple of weeks. I question just how healthy he actually is. Pine had some mobility. Cohen's a stiff. I think they might use Pine for the upside. But I like the under in this game, even though it's a low total. I was really close to putting first quarter under 10 as my one of my three picks because I think that both teams are going to get off to a very hideous start. I'm going Notre Dame. At the end of the day, I think it'll be close. But I think Notre Dame's got the better athletes. I think that they'll do enough – to get the job done. Disgustingly low scoring game. Give me 16 13 Notre Dame. You. Oof. Very ugly game, but you can see it. You can see a hideous game. Yeah, I suppose. Um, you know, I just. I'm not taking the over 47. No, it's, it, you know, it's, it's two very good defenses. This Virginia Tech defense, especially at home, has been really good this it's year. It's been very good. Yeah. And, Notre Dame still has the problem. They can't run the ball, Scott. So that's why I'm I'm a little worried about taking any kind of an under involving involving Notre Dame. Because I think it's just a bit of an overreaction because let me ask you, let's just say Notre Dame ended up beating Cincinnati last week. I know they ended up losing but by double you know, by two possessions, but still, just bear with me. Had they beaten Cincinnati, what's the spread in this game? Six and a half. That I, I'm kind of viewing it the same way. I think it would be somewhere between four and a half and six and a half. Now, of course, Cincinnati won the game, but I think it's an overreaction because I think Cincinnati's really, really good. And people are saying, oh, Notre Dame, classic Notre Dame. This team's going to s- fall apart. I think that they are still a pretty good football team. I think they're better than Virginia Tech talent-wise. So I'll go with Notre Dame. I think it's a bit of an overreaction to fading Notre Dame after a loss against arguably a top-five team in the country. 
Well, and Virginia Tech, in fairness, they're really still kind of making their reputation off one game. Off that it was the first game of the season. Off that opening game when they held North Carolina and Sam Howell to 10 points. I mean, they only scored 21 against Richmond. Like, I don't trust this offense at all. Right. Yeah, they've, they've kind of been psychotic. They gave up 27 to West Virginia in a loss. And then they've had games against Middle Tennessee State and Richmond. So, And that West Virginia game was close at the end because they almost came back and won. They were getting buried in that game. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was an ugly game. I, you know what? If this were if this were in Notre Dame, I'd probably go the other way. I'm if gonna, Notre Dame was laying three and a half or more, I would take the points. But it's pick them. I got. I'm gonna go Notre Dame. Okay, uh, I've got you there. And I gotta like the under. You're gonna you're gonna play the under. I I can't take the over with those two teams. I can't. Yeah, I. I just I worry about Notre Dame being behind and having to throw the ball, but and they we, and again because they can't run, but I just I just don't see a lot of points there. Arkansas Ole Miss, one of the better games of the weekend. It's the we we, we joked about this on the show. It's it's the bronze medal game after both of these teams had a chance to really assert their presence in the SEC and redefine the 21st century and how the new direction. Yeah, none of that happened. They're they were both steamrolled by Georgia and Alabama respectively. Uh, Ole Miss at home, five and a half point favorite. Sixty-six and a half is the number. By the way, if you got different numbers, because I did this like yesterday morning, so if the numbers have changed. I see around five, five and a half. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, and, and usually I used an amalgam of the board. So if you, but if you see something dramatically different, you know, don't be afraid to jump in there. <laughs> this is one of the games I'm least interested in betting. Okay, just too tight, too too. I, I don't really know what to think because Arkansas has got killed by Georgia, but Jefferson's been a little bit banged up. Of course, he's going to be playing in this game, but I do question what percentage he is in terms of health. And Ole Miss got re- got absolutely destroyed by Alabama, but who hasn't? And I think this Ole Miss team is still pretty good. But th- I still don't think this defense is very good. So hold my nose, take Ole Miss at home, but I really don't have any interest in this game. You? Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll lay five with Ole Miss. I'm kind of the same way. I'm kind of curious to see what we have because you've got two teams that were undefeated that were playing really good football or what appeared to be really good football going into their – and they were just absolutely manhandled. I think and, my takeaway for why I'm kind of low on Arkansas is because they were, of course, the Cinderella story for the first couple of weeks. Their main win was against A&M and Texas, mm-hmm. but – a and M, the last game that they had, A and M's not ranked because they lost at home to Mississippi State. So I yeah. think that win is a bit inflated. Right, and and Texas has shown an ability to play psychotic uh, uh, football the entire season so far. Yeah. So, and Ole Miss, you know, their their big win was against Louisville again opening week when it wasn't uh, even a win. That was a shellacking. It was, it was, and then they got past. You know, then they beat the hell out of Austin P and Tulane. So yeah. you're like. I don't know what we have here with either one of them. I'm going to take the better player and the better offense. I'll take, I'll take Matt Corral at home, and I, I can't play. I, I, I'm going to play. I can't, I can't take an under with Ole Miss. I'm going to do it. I, I think this Arkansas defense is good enough to put up just a, a bit of a fight, just enough of a fight to keep it under. I think so. if Ole Miss covers, they're probably scoring. I'd say he potentially forty. Okay, so I'll, I'll go with the over. All right, very good. And would you you had Ole Miss there too? Uh, yeah, minus five. Okay. Minus I also love the uh, promo that they got going for Ole Miss because they, uh, because of the popcorn comments by Kiffin, they're All giving right. out free popcorn to five thousand fans. Nice. I mean, you got to make a meme out of it after you kind of did it to yourself. So I kind of like how they're running with it. Number 12, Oklahoma State is off. Let's talk about Michigan State. Minus five heading on the road to Jersey. Rutgers getting some respect. The Scataway? Uh, Yeah. Scataway, New Jersey. Makes sense. Getting all the respect, right? What, they give up 90 to Ohio State last week? Yeah. Yeah. So they're definitely stepping it down a level of competition. It's like at the dog races where, you know, he steps up to the A and then just gets Mm -hmm. abused. No, he's, he's dropping back down to B. But in the B, he'll kill everybody. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. he'll kill. He dominates. He's, a, he's it's like a, Jackson Coer. He's a 3B player. <laughs> like Jackson Coer. Yes, exactly right. 
Scott, what do we got? What do we have with Michigan State? We have a good football team, but defensively, I can't tell if they are not that great or if Zappi's just really, really good with Western Kentucky because they move the ball at will. But you can't understand. You can't really go wrong with mentioning how great Walker is, and I've mentioned it from the opening uh, game against uh, Northwestern on- on- onward. What a tremendous running back who's going to be guaranteed to play on Sundays. He is so damn good. Where'd he, where'd he, where was he? What do you mean? He where'd transferred he... from, uh, oh boy. I'm trying just, to remember where he transferred from. I just knew this. It wasn't Wake, was it? It might have. I got Wake in my head. Was it Wake? All right, no, I want to know. Sorry. It's all good, but uh, Walker is a tremendous damn player. And Rutgers, I'm a little bit torn on because on one hand, they got killed by Ohio State, but they kept it close against Michigan. And I think Michigan's actually pretty good. So I think you're kind of a little yeah, bit did. torn here, but it was Wake. I was actually right. He did come from Wake. Yeah, absolutely. That was right. Okay. I thought I, that, that was stuck in my head for some reason. So, Does okay. it bother you that, that and like you said, it, it could be because of Zappy, but is there a deeper problem? Michigan State, only one team gives up more yards passing per game than Michigan State. Can Rutgers throw the ball? Well, that's, that's the question. I, and it wouldn't appear so, not with, not with any great efficiency. I'm going to hold my nose and take Michigan State. I think it'll be very close. I think it'll be ugly. I like the under. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Michigan a... State struggled defensively against Nebraska. I think Nebraska's defense is okay, but I think so is Rutgers. You know, and there's a, there's a growing school of thought that may believe Nebraska defense is better than okay. I don't, I don't I, know. I sa- I've said that weeks ago. I said I thought, this, I thought Nebraska's defense was pretty good. Well, I don't know that I agree with that yet, so – but I, I, Michigan State's been good to me so far. I'll play them. Uh... I know Rutgers are going to think the defense stinks because of the Ohio State game. Ohio State's going to wake up at some point. That offense is really, really good. They just have the athletes. Yeah. Michigan State, it's a good offense. The athletes, I think, are a little bit closer to Rutgers than Ohio State is, wouldn't you say? Probably, yeah. I mean, that's – I would think Michigan State who should have a recruiting advantage over Rutgers. Oh, no, they should, but I'm saying that I do think that Rutgers' defensive guys should actually hang with Michigan State's guys to some degree. But a total of 51, I'm not sure Rutgers is getting to 20. Okay. Take the over there. I see Michigan State's at about four and a half, so I'll lay the four and a half. The four and a half somewhere? Yeah. Get- In fact, basically everywhere. You're going to get no beefs from me as long as uh, you and I are on the same side. If you and I are different sides, like, oh, you're not seeing that number anywhere. That's bullshit. Here's an interesting game, Scott. BYU hosting Boise State. They're in Provo. The number 10 ranked Cougars are a six point favorite. 57 is the number there over uh, with the game with the Broncos. I'm gonna just gonna address the elephant in the room. Does Boise stink? Mm, I believe it's possible. Yes, I, I didn't. I didn't want to say anything because I thought they might be listening. But yeah, I think it's possible. Boise State just isn't very good. Uh, they burned me on the Oklahoma State game, which they arguably should have won. But that's of course on the Smurf turf. Bachmeyer is just not the guy that people thought he was going to be. He's just not very good. You know, did they basically play one good half of football this season? That first half against UCF, and then the storms came, and that was the end of their season. You can make an argument that's the case. I think that this team cannot run the ball at all. You try to use Van Buren, but you can't run it. Offensively, Bachmeyer is guaranteed to make at least two, three stupid decisions every game. And defensively, they've been a wreck. Now, they do have a first-year head coach, so maybe it'll take some growing pains and we'll see what happens. But well, The record, Bachmeyer isn't his. No, no, I know that. I'm saying besides that, they, everything else might take a little bit of time to actually work a system in place and try to figure something out. BYU, is Hall officially back for this game? Because they were using a third stringer in the second half against Utah State. Now let's see what I've got here for an injury report. Because the backup in Romney got injured. They had to use a third string guy. They ended up covering anyway, but... Hall, Hall Hall is questionable. Romney is doubtful. So, on based on the information that we have now, I gotta take Boise. Because if Hall is not playing... I'm not laying six points with a third-string quarterback. I can't do it. If Hall plays, I'll feel bad about my decision. But as of right now, time of recording, in Friday afternoon, 
I'm not laying six with a third string quarterback. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, you the defense doesn't do enough for you to get to get by. Oh, the Boise State's defense stinks. But I I watched BYU struggle to move the ball against Utah State's defense once the third string guy got in. I think Boise could win the game if you see a third string quarterback back there. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to play the other way. I'm going to, I'm going to game. I'm going to do something that sports betters hate to do. And that's gamble. I'm going to gamble that hall plays. Okay. I'm going to take the Cougs minus the six and I'll have you on Boise state going the other way. I think you would agree though, that since we're doing this well in advance, you have to take some stances. Oh, we're sure. Just, we're just disagreeing. Well, we're just, we're making, we're making guesses. We're, we're, yeah. we're each making a different guess about hall status. Pretty much. So we'll we'll see what happens there. Uh, I'm going to play the under. I have to. I think a third string quarterback's playing for BYU. You say you're you're kind of in for a penny, in for a pound at that point. Once you've decided Hall isn't going to play, I think even if he plays, there's a chance Boise covers. But if Hall does not play, it's this line's going to plummet. I was, right? I was gonna, that's what I was going to ask you. Where does that number go to? BYU will be favored by two and a half, three. Okay, so you think it? You think it cuts? It'll it it'll cross a couple of key numbers. Okay, I'm just uh, trying to read the latest information here. And it's tricky. He's got rib issues, so yeah. they got to wait and see. Hmm. Yeah, he's missed. Uh, he missed the two games there. Got I don't the know rib- if he's gonna have a jacket on, some added padding. I'm not sure, but the point is, I don't know. So I'll take the points. Got the wind knocked out of him. For, a couple, for a couple of days. That's what they said at the time. Yeah, he got the wind knocked out. He missed two starts. Michigan. Heading to Lincoln, right next to the penis on the prairie. You ever, you ever seen the penis on the prairie, Scott? The you make Bill. the same joke every time we go through Nebraska. It, it's in Lincoln. It's right yeah, I there. know. It's a giant. Mm-hmm. It's what it is. It's, uh, it's a male appendage. They're, they're compensating in Nebraska. I don't know what for. Perhaps for lack of offense. For the bad, for the bad football team. That's what I'm saying. Three and a half point favorite, Scott, the Wolverines. Wolverines! 50 and a half is the number. Michigan and the under for me. For the record, uh, three and a half are long gone. It's three right now. Pretty much everywhere. Money coming in on the black shirts, huh? A ton of money coming in on the black shirts. And if you want to take stances, I know I tried a stance last week with Wisconsin. Uh-huh. I said that if I wasn't following my trend, I loved was I loved Michigan to kill Wisconsin, but I ended up caving to the system. For this one, I'm taking Nebraska. This line looks dangerously, dangerously low. Mm-hmm. This just looks like a trap line if I've ever seen one. I'm taking Nebraska. This team can run the ball. Defensively, I actually think this team is very good. As long as Martinez can only make one stupid decision oh. instead of about seven, I think Nebraska is going to hang tough. Give me Nebraska. Okay. All right. And the total? No way I'm taking the over. Okay. So that means that you, you're taking the under? Yeah. You think that three, you think that money coming in, you think it's a banana in the tailpipe? I don't. Because money's coming in on Nebraska, so I actually like the line move. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're, you're saying that, that... I'm saying the line's a banana in the tailpipe because Michigan's only favored by three. And well, I'm and the fact that yeah, you think it's all a ruse that. Uh, they I should. think Nebraska's not that bad. I think Scott Frost is known as the offensive guy, so people look at the offense and mm-hmm. say, "Wow, Martinez is terrible." And you're not wrong, but this defense is actually, I think, pretty good. All right, all right, good enough. Uh, Oregon is off. They are number eight. They have taken a a well deserved week off. Ohio State, Scott O H I O minus twenty one. There in Columbus. See, they have a normal capital building. I don't make any jokes. All good. 71 is the total there against the Crabs of Maryland. Uh, will the real Maryland please stand up? Please. They showed, up, they showed up last week. You think that's the real team? I think that this team is really, really based on its offense. Their defense, I don't think, is very good. Now, I'm not going to blame the defense fully for last week because their offense had six interceptions, but – they lost one of their best wide receivers in that gruesome with that gruesome injury, which I'm sure you saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's out. He's one of their best players. So I think uh, Tua's brother is going to struggle a bit here. Ohio State might have finally woken up in conference play, and all it took was a matchup against Rutgers. I think Ohio State might score 50 here. 
I'm taking Ohio State. Yeah, see, this is a number. Now, see, this to me, this is almost a banana in the tailpipe as you're like, wait a minute, wasn't Maryland good? And now they're three point three touchdown underdog. That's that, like that's the whole Loxley movement, though. You start off really good against really awful at a conference competition, then you face mm. a de- some decent teams and you get killed. Isn't that usually how it works for Loxley? Yep, and I've got the over 71 there, too. I can't take the under. I mean, Merrill give up 51 points to Iowa. But the way that I have to look at this is I have to fade Maryland solely because of the fact that they have issues with, with turnovers and penalties, and that's been an issue all season long. But when you lose Demas, who's leading your team in receiving yards, and he's out for the year, I have to assume the offense is going to look a little bit worse, minimum. So give me Ohio State. Especially when you rely on the pass like they do. And Demas is very good. Like, he's a top two, top three round guy in the NFL draft. Like, he's good. Scott's no longer the Red River shootout. It's too violent. It's the Red River Red River rivalry. Mm-hmm. Try to say that. I Oklahoma. think you make his both offenses, uh, or because Oklahoma's offense hasn't really been firing that much this season. Yeah. Oklahoma number six, Texas number 21. Oklahoma is a three and a half point favorite over Texas. 63 and a half is the number. Of course, this is a neutral site game there. It's in the Cotton Bowl? Uh, in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, the fairgrounds there. You know that I always give out a couple of money line underdogs if I think that there is a good opportunity. I think Nebraska could be one, mm-hmm. but I'm looking at Texas money line. I have to. And okay. There's no way that I cannot take Texas money line here solely because – these games are always close between these teams. Oklahoma cannot score. We know Rattler is probably a shoe in for two, three picks, or at least one. But I am a huge Robinson guy in the backfield for Texas. And I know we kind of criticized the Sarkeesian hire a little bit early on. They exercised some demons. They beat TCU. They never beat TCU. Right. I think this Texas team is actually pretty good. I'll take Texas. Okay. Um, yeah, they've been – They've been a little psychotic, like we talked about earlier, but... The Oklahoma hasn't been psychotic. They just haven't been very good. No, they haven't. We, we talked about that. They've won, what, every game by single digits? Uh, yes. So, uh, excluding the one game against Western Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking, I'm talking you know, they're... Against actual teams, yeah. Peers or whatever. So, yeah, I just don't know how you... I just don't know how you lay the points in that spot. And, and they may very well cover. It, it could absolutely... They could, happen. but based on the rivalry and how these games are always a war, mm-hmm. it's either points or pass. I'll take the money long because I think that they're extremely live. Yeah, this is, this is one of those... Throw the record books out, and you can, and you can really do that. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You've seen each of these teams, when they were massive underdogs, jump up and bite the other ones. It really, the records don't matter, so... I'm going to play the under there. What are you on? Uh, for this one with Oklahoma, I, I, I got to take the under. This offense is just broken. All right. Very good. And another Friday night game. We'll be quick with this one, Scott. Temple, Cincinnati. We did weigh in on that yesterday. But just to recap, what do you got here? I'm actually leaning Temple. I think that they'll cover in garbage time. Okay. I like All the right. under. All right. We got the under there. A lot, lot of unders I like this week. You know that's that's normally not a bad idea. If, uh, if you see all if you see all overs on your sheet, you're probably not doing very well. So I, I always think there's value on the under. I probably I, tend to go the yeah. other way too much. Uh, Temple, don't get me wrong. Of course, Memphis is a lot worse than Cincinnati. This mm-hmm. Temple team's kind of growing a little bit this season. I think they're going to lose pretty handily, but I do think they'll lose within four touchdowns. Okay. All right, I've got Cincinnati minus uh, 29. Do you think there's a bit of a hangover, though, after beating Notre Dame? I think normally there would be, but I don't think they can afford it, Scott. This is a national TV spot. It's a standalone game. I think they have the opportunity to impress America, and that matters right now. Oh, I'm betting on drive props for this game. I'm just saying in general, Cincinnati, I watched them play with their food against Murray State a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I know. It happens. So, and that's certainly, that's what I'm worried about more than anything else in this game. I like, still like Cincinnati, but the hangover yeah. factor is the only thing I'm worried about. I'm not worried about Temple being better than I think or Cincinnati not being as good as we've seen. Mm-hmm. None of that. It's just all about the brain. You're giving me 30 in a conference game. I'll take 30. 
I get that. I get that. Just not 39. Yeah. Over or under, what do you want? Uh, under. Okay. I, I think Temple might cover. I think that they are not going to have a fun time trying to score. So I think, I think Cincinnati's offense might just pull everybody relatively quickly. Okay. Penn State at Iowa. Big 10 football. We got a total of about 41. Big 10 football at its finest. Iowa up there in Iowa City, Scott, they are one and a half point favorites. Like you said, 41 is the number right here. I am a believer in this Iowa State defense. I knew oh, they I think, were, you mean, I think you mean Iowa defense. Or the Iowa defense, although Iowa State defense actually not bad. But the Iowa defense, after their performance last week against Maryland, a team that I thought really had some offensive weapons, and they just absolutely stoned them. I mean, I liked Iowa in that game in general. But yep. Yep. that defense is so good at forcing turnovers. And Clifford, he's been pretty good this year. But against an actual defense, I think he's going to struggle. I, I'm all over Iowa here. I have to like Iowa. I mean, you're, you're playing at home in Kinnick, which is a tough place to play for anybody. Mm-hmm. You know it's going to be sold out. Penn State is a team that I think is okay. But when your main wins are against Wisconsin, who's awful, Auburn, who's eh, and now you travel on the road in a conference game, I think Iowa's going to win this game. I think it'll be close. I like the under, which sounds crazy because it's a total of 41 and you can kind of make up ways to score points. Yep. But I, can't, I just can't take the over. I can't do it. I think Iowa and Penn State are both going to just milk the clock the entire game. 17-13, 13-10. I had 17-14 as the first score in my mind. So I'm going with the under. I'm on the under as well, and I'm on Iowa here. So. Yep, I agree. All right, very good. Yeah, coming down to it. Hey, speaking of Auburn. Probably not going to go much better for them this week either, Scott, as they uh, host the Georgia Bulldogs. Go dogs. If Iowa doesn't have the best defense, Georgia certainly does. And we talked about that. You you think Georgia has a little better defense? I think Georgia the has the best defense in the country. Okay. Well, they – I think certain, Iowa's second, but – It's it's possible. I, I think it's also possible that Iowa has it, mainly because Georgia has been challenged more than Iowa has as far as their schedule goes. So – um, we'll see, but again, two very good defenses right here. Um, Georgia in the under. I'm taking Georgia. Okay. I actually like the over. All right. I have questions about Auburn's defense. I think Georgia is going to end up scoring 30-something, 30 35 or so. I think Auburn with the crowd is going to score two touchdowns. I'll take a 35 for 34-14 game. Okay. Georgia, by the way, has not given up more than 14 points on the year. Yeah, they haven't given up more. I think they'll give up 14. Okay. Thank you. Just saying if you want to take a look at the team total there. Yeah. So you've got the over, and I have the under in that one. I've taken unders for basically every game. I'll take a stance on an over. Yeah, you, there you go. Good mix. And then there was one. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Bama. 18-point favorites against A&M. The 12th man, 13th man. How many men would they need to beat Alabama, Scott? I see a couple of 17-and-a-halves, by the way. 17-and-a-half? That depends. If they have 15 men, can one of them actually play quarterback? Mm. Never thought you'd miss Kellen Mond, huh? Calcutta, Calzada, whatever. He's not very good at football. I'm taking taking Bama. You can make an argument, College Station, you know, tough place to play. Yeah. They lost to Mississippi State last week. Such a bad loss at home. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. G- give me Bama. I think Bama's going to roll. You, you think, oh, you know, A&M, tough place to play. A&M, A&M has gotten murdered by Bama in the last handful of years. I think Bama wins by three touchdowns going away. I'm tired of this team jerking me off in the second half. I'd take the first. Give me Bama in the first half. What do I mean, 10 or so? See, I wish A&M was still ranked because I think Saban might be a little bit more incentivized to run up the score and win this game by 90. Yeah. I think they'll settle by winning this game by 80. No, I think, I think Bama wins by 21, 28. <sighs> I really just don't think Calzada's any good. I'm taking the home dog. Okay. I won't respect myself. You like the over, I assume? I have to. I think Bama's going to score 42. I'm not, I'm, not taking any, I'm not taking any unders with Alabama. I'll tell you that right now. 
They lost their backup running back, but they still have about 45 other good running backs. So I think that will survive. Yeah. I just – I giggle when anybody says a backup at Alabama, especially the running back position. I mean, well, they're all good enough to start in, or play in the NFL. That's what I'm saying. I mean, what do you, what do you think? They have like four five-star recruits on their, on their roster as far as running back goes? Yeah. I don't know. All right, very good. All right, that brings to an end the show. Um, one thing left to do here, Scott, and I know you have been waiting – so long to say it. So as we go to our pick segment, you're going to lay out your three. I'm going to lay out my three. I give you the honor, sir. Say it. Well, for this, for this show, it's a loser's walk. So you're going first. That's I don't right. know if you have a sound effect queued up or not. but um, Oh, yeah. You ready? Oh, the very, very good memory. All right. So Scott and I are going to give you our three favorite plays. And, of course, those are... Get ready for our 5,000-star whale play. Fade the public sharks. One million unit lock of the century. There you go. That's it. My first lock of the century. Sell your house. Bet the farm. SMU minus 13 and a half. A game that you and I differed on, if I'm not mistaken. Talked about this during the show. Pony struggled against the pass. Unfortunately, Navy averages 62 yards a game passing. I think SMU does a good enough job stopping the run. I think Navy does nothing to stop the pass. Give me SMU minus 13 and a half. So for this one, we actually picked the same game, but both of us can actually win. I got Navy team total over 20 and a half against SMU at minus 110 on bet MGM. Mostly involves the switch at quarterback with Ty Lavatai, who I think actually provided a spark. They scored 34 points against UCF last week. SMU has played two road games this season, gave up 37 to La Tech, and gave up 34 to TCU. But historically, SMU has been awful defensively against Navy. Navy has scored at least 30 points in each of the last six meetings, including some awful teams post-Malcolm Perry. So they still scored 30-plus points. Team total of 20 and a half. That sounds really low to me. I'm taking Navy team total over 20 and a half. All right. Very good. So there's that, that and that's not even the one because we were joking. Obviously, we don't tell each other our picks. Well, we were joking. We're going, we're going to have the same there's pick. There's going to be one point. the same pick. I think SMU could win, but I think you'd be I think you'd settle for a 42 to 24 game, and I'll settle for a 42 24 game. So we yes. we both could win. Yes, absolutely. All right, I'm going to make a counter. I'm going to, this is going to be my counterintuitive play of the week. Scott, I'm going to play the University of Texas at San Antonio Roadrunners and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers under 71. That's right. I'm going to take an under with Bailey Zappi and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. You didn't say it, by the way. I'm disappointed. What's that? Meep, meep. Oh. <laughs> you the Roadrunners. Come on. Right. You know, it's... Tough to throw the ball when you don't have the ball, Scott. This UTSA team, they are going to want to run the ball or run the ball and then run the ball again. They are only one non-service academy team runs the ball more often than the Roadrunners. They average almost 50 carries per game. I think they're going to sap the will to live from the Hilltoppers and limit the opportunities for Bailey Zappi. It doesn't take many long drives or dry drives to keep us under 71. With the number that high, I'm playing the under. With, with that total, if you get a red zone field goal, you might actually just win the bet. <laughs> That's right. That's right. right. If, you, if you see three punts, you're probably good. Pretty much. But anyway, looking at my deep dive pick of the week, I'm taking South Alabama minus three at minus 115 on DraftKings at Texas State. South Alabama, 3-1. and one. Only loss came last week on the road against Louisiana. Only lost by two points. So they actually hung tough there. I thought they actually played pretty well. Now, Texas State has been atrocious defensively lately. Uh, Texas State has allowed at least 42 points in each of the last two games, including a loss to Incarnate Word, which is just impressive in itself. Now, a couple of reasons why. Mother. Yeah, a couple of reasons why they lost to Incarnate Word mostly involving the absence of a fair share of people. They played Eastern Michigan, uh, not last week they had a bye, but two weeks ago. 
and they gave up 59 points, lost by 38. Huge reason why. Texas State was missing 18 – was missing, sorry, 19 players because of COVID. That sounds like a lot. So they had a week off in between. They should get a couple of people back. You're still missing double-digit players, and you're only getting three here after giving up 59 in the last game. This team's not very good anyway. I'm taking South Alabama because they hung tough with Louisiana, and they also hung tough without their starting running back, who actually might be back this week. So I think the South Alabama team is good enough to beat a COVID-riddled Texas State team by at least four points. Give me South Alabama. Okay, very good. I, I like that. I liked that play when I first looked at it. and The I COVID thing, I already like South Alabama, but the COVID thing just takes it over the top. Right, see, I didn't even know the COVID angle yet. So, yeah, very, very good there, my friend. Okay, well, it sucks because I'm going to have to tell us – I'm going to have to reveal the pick first. Hey, you go first. Let's go. I, for, for the sake of this competition, it's going to be a battle of two picks because I know we both have the same third pick. And I'm going to tell you that I know – For Scott to take the same pick that he knew I was going to take, his pride had to have taken a serious hit. But I I really wanted to find something else that I liked because I didn't want to just do it. But at the end of the day, I had to. It's more important for him to get the pick right than than to acquiesce to it. I'm a man of the people. I'm trying to win games. All right. So Scott and I are both. I'm I'm really going out on a limb. Yeah, just just do it. We're going to play the Presbyterian Blue Hose. We're going to fade the Presbyterian Blue Hose. Excuse me. As they uh, they go up against who are they going up against, Scott? They are going up against Morehead State. Yep. Less talk, Morehead. Yep. That's right. So let's just run out a couple of things here from Presbyterian to recap for those of you that are new to the show. Presbyterian, coached by Kevin Kelly, the coach that never punts. He came from Pulaski Academy in Little Rock, Arkansas. You know the story by now. First shot in colleges, first two games, did very well. By the way, Presbyterian non-scholarship program. They played two other non-scholarship programs and did very well. And when I say very well, I mean they uh, scored 151 points in their first two games. That's pretty good. Uh, Kevin Kelly's a genius. He'll be in the pros within uh, two years. Next two games, had to pump the brakes a little bit because they uh, played the Campbell Camels, first scholarship program they've gone up against. And Campbell edged them 72 to nothing. So it was ugly. It was just an extremely bad game. And the next game, they played the Dayton Flyers. At Dayton, Presbyterian got out to a 23-point lead. You're thinking, well, maybe Campbell's just really good. Maybe they're really, really good, and Presbyterian is really quite a team. Well, Dayton answered that 23 nothing start with a 63-7 to barrage. They end up winning that game 63-43. So now, if you're scoring at home, the uh they've been outscored by 92 points blue hose have given up 135 points in their last two games uh getting morehead state minus three and a half it's an absolute steal I, by the I, way you know who morehead actually beat last week morehead state last week scott well they beat dayton 45 38 and so, dayton was the team that just beat presbyterian by 20 so right. by the transitive yeah. property we cannot lose this game uh, by the transitive property yes but one thing impressed me about Moorhead, they actually have a pretty good quarterback. Uh, just going through quickly, I know we both have the same pick, whatever, but you're looking at Pappas, who has 12 passing touchdowns. I think he's capable of torching this defense. Moorhead, as long as they don't turn the ball over about, I don't know, 12 times in this game, like Presbyterian did against Campbell, yeah. they should win this game by at least a touchdown. I, Minimum. They could win this game by 30. Did you tell everybody what the total is for this game? 90 and a half. 90 and a half. 90 and the hook. Any value there? I'm not taking the under, but <laughs> I, I'm curious what that first quarter total is. It doesn't exist, but if you can find it, it I kind of want to laugh. God. What do you even All set right. that first quarter total at, like 17 and a half? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Have to be, no, it'd have to be more than that. You'd know you'd be somewhere around 22, 23. Well, no, because you usually expect a lower scoring first quarter, higher higher scoring second and third quarters. Yeah, I think you can throw that. I think you can throw that out with this team. Saying usually, so if you see a total of like forty seven, the first quarter will be ten. Well, that's because you're guaranteed to start at the you know deep in your own territory yeah. in the first drive. So, all right, there you go, Scott. Just to recap, my picks this week are the SMU Ponies minus thirteen and a half, the UTSA WKU under seventy one. 
and Moorhead State as they sneak by the Presbyterian Blue Hose by three and a half points or better. So my three picks, I got South Alabama minus three at minus 115 on DraftKings against Texas State. I got Navy team total over 20 and a half against SMU at minus 110 on BetMGM. And like my co-host, I have Moorhead State minus three and a half at minus 110 against Presbyterian. Okay, and I'm just saying to everybody, apologies in advance, because sometime this year, you guys are going to listen to the show and you're going to be like, like, these guys are both really, really, really excited about the team that's playing Presbyterian, and they never get excited about anything. Do you know how excited I am whenever I can bet on the Citadel in basketball and they have a total in the 160s? Right. It's the same like exact that. situation. Like that. So what I'm, what I'm saying is at some point they're going to jump up and the Blue Hose are going to bite us. Probably not going to be this week, but at some point it's going to happen. And the one a week they do, we're going to have the over instead of the side. Somebody out there is going to load up and we're and they're going to be pissed at us because we're probably going to do this. If it works out again, I, I can't see stopping. You keep you know? setting the spreads at three and a half to within right. 10. They're losing yeah. by 20. The, the, the spread should be – and that was a miracle that they got that close last week. It's Campbell a, covered by 63 points. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. All right, so there you go. Hey, thanks for joining us, guys. It was a fun show as always. Don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to give us some comments if you're watching us on YouTube. And, of course, rate and review if you're checking us out in podcast form. Good luck on all your plays this weekend. College, NFL, whatever it is, hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money when you head back to the window. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to have our NFL show up here in a little while. But for now, have a great day for myself and for Scott. We appreciate you checking us out and being part of the show. We'll see you next time on Winners and Winers Radio. Take care, everybody.